Today I'll be showing you 10 Linux commands you should try. So now, depending on how long you've been using Linux, you may or may not have used the terminal before. Whether you have or haven't, there are still some commands that can be really useful, and also some commands that aren't particularly useful, but are very fun to try out. So I'm going to be going over 10 of those in this video. First I'm going to go over the actually useful commands, and then I'm going to go over the not so useful, but fun commands. So now, in this video, I'm going to be using Ubuntu as an example, but all these commands should work on pretty much any distro. Now, most of these commands are already installed, depending on your distribution, but some of them you will need to install. If you do need to install them, when you go to run them, depending on your distro, it may actually tell you what command you need to punch in to install the command that you want to run. But without further ado, let's get right into this. Alright, so now the first command on this list is the shutdown command. So now you just type in shutdown into your terminal, it'll schedule a shutdown for a minute from now. And of course you can type shutdown dash C to cancel that, as it says right here. So now if you want to schedule a shutdown for longer than a minute in advance, you just type shutdown and then the number of minutes in advance that you want to schedule your shutdown for. Say you want to schedule it for an hour in advance, you just type shutdown 60 and then it'll schedule it for an hour in advance. Now the time units for the shutdown command are always in 24 hour time, but you should be able to figure it out, no problem. All right, number nine on this list is screen fetch. Now this'll take a little while to run, but once it's done, it'll actually bring up some real good information about your computer, like your username and then your computer's name, as it says right here in your terminal already. But it'll also tell you what Linux distro you're on. It'll even give you a text art symbol for the distro that you're running. It'll tell you what Linux kernel you're on, how long since you've rebooted your computer, how many packages you have installed, a lot of other good information, like how much RAM you're using and how much you have left. Now of course, depending on your distro, you could go into your distro's settings and check a lot of this stuff, but makes you way cooler if you do it this way. Alright, number eight on this list is the file system commands. Now I know this is a lot of commands in one, but in my opinion, they're basically a package deal, so that's why I'm counting them as one command. But I am going to start off with the cd command for going into a directory. Say I want to go to the documents folder within my home directory. I can just do a cd documents and then there I am. Then if I want to go a directory up, in this case back to my home directory, I can do a cd dot dot and there we go. And if I want to go to a directory outside my home directory, say for example the etc directory, I can just do cd slash etc and I can even do cd slash to go to the root of my drive. And if I want to go back to my home folder, I could just do a cd tilde then hit enter, and there we go. Now the tilde always tells you that you're in your home directory. This part will always tell you what directory you're in. Typing in a tilde in a file system command is basically the equivalent of typing in the path to your home folder, like slash home slash your username, or in my case slash home slash drew. There's also other commands, like you can make a folder in the directory that you're in by doing mkdir, and then let's say I want to make a test folder, then I can just hit enter, and then if I go into my home folder, I can see that that test folder is there, and if I want to get rid of that, I can just do rmdir test, and then it's gone. Now just be careful when deleting directories, because it doesn't go to the trash, like it permanently deletes it, so make sure that there's nothing in that directory that you need before deleting it. You can also delete files by typing in rm, and then the path to the file that you want to delete, or if you want to delete everything in a directory, you just do rm-rf, and then the path to the directory which you want to delete everything in with the RF standing for recursive force. Now just whatever directory you do this on, don't do it on slash or any important directory. Now there's also the chmod command which will allow you to assign permissions to files. It's kind of hard to explain right here, but I'll have a link to the documentation explaining how to use it, since I don't really have time to go that in depth. And a couple other file system commands I want to mention quickly are the mv command and the cp command. Now the mv command, as it suggests, will allow you to move files. You just type in the source directory and then the target directory. So like slash source, directory, and then target directory. You can also use this to rename files by typing in the file name source directory, and then under the target directory, keep the directory the same, except you change the file name. By the way, the cp command is the same principle, only it would copy files instead of just moving them. All right, number seven on this list is the nano command. Now what this will do is it'll let you use your terminal as a text editor. Say I want to put in this is a test file, 
then I just hit Control X and it'll prompt me to save it. I just hit Y and then I type in the path to the file. In this case, I'm in my home folder. So I'm just going to type in test exactly like that. If you want to like go from the root of your hard drive down, just make sure to start the file name to write with slash. And then if you want to go into a subfolder within a folder within the directory that you're in, if you know what I mean, you just put in a slash like that, kind of like the file system commands that I mentioned in number eight. But now I'm going to write test and now it creates a text file in my home directory. And now if I want to open up a file with it, I just type in nano test like that and there we go. And then to get out of it, I just press control X and there we go. Pretty much with this same principle with file system commands, which I just went over. All right, number six on this list is sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade. Now what this command will do is it'll go and check for updates for your system and it'll prompt you to install them if you have any. So basically how this works is you just type this command in, then press enter, then punch in your password, and press enter, since this is a sudo command. So now I'm gonna give you a couple pro tips. These are two commands in one, so that's why I'm counting them as one command, because at least in my opinion, they're basically a package deal. So now if you wanna run multiple commands on one line, you just use two and symbols to separate each command like this. And also the sudo stands for substitute user do. So now this will allow you to run commands as root to give you administrative privileges, which is required for things like update commands. Now if you do know how to do it properly, the sudo command will even allow you to run commands as other users. But if you don't specify a user, which the vast vast majority of the time it's run, no user is specified, it'll just automatically run as root. Now, of course, depending on your distribution, you can check for updates from your distribution's package manager or your software updater, but makes you way cooler if you do it this way. Now, this is actually one command that will change depending on your distro. Now, the apt command is only for Debian and Debian-based distribution which includes Ubuntu. For Arch and Arch-based distros, which includes Manjaro, it'll be the Pac-Man command. And for Fedora, I believe it's DNF. Now, I'm not going to go over every single distro because I could make a whole video about that. But what you need to know is these package management commands are different depending on your distro and they may have different syntaxes. So if you're using a distro other than a Debian-based distro, you will want to look that one up. But anyway, now that we're past our useful commands, let's take a look at our not-so-useful commands. Start Starting off with the pi command, which will basically calculate pi for you up to as many decimals as you want. By default, it'll do up to the hundredth decimal. So this is a great command for you math lovers who are watching this video. Now, if you want pi up to a specific decimal, let's say you only want up to the fifth decimal, you just do pi five, and then there's pi just up to the fifth decimal. And if you want pi up to the two hundredth decimal, it'll allow you to do that, or the a thousandth decimal, it'll even allow you to do that. Now, just a warning: if you go too many decimals, it'll just take forever to compute because as you may know pi is infinitely long but for this video is really the only thing you need to know about it i'm not gonna go too in depth about it because that is a whole other topic all right number four on this list is the figlet command now what this will do is this will create a text art version of whatever you type in after it so let's say i do figlet welcome it'll give me that or if i want to do figlet drew howden tech It'll do that, and then you can copy and paste this into whatever if you want to look cool. Say I want to copy and paste this into a text editor. There we go. And by the way, if you want to copy and paste from terminal, you'll have to do Control Shift C since Control C is used for canceling a command. For example, if it's taking forever, you can just do Control C, and then that would cancel a command that you're running. But Control Shift C is what actually copies from terminal. Now, for any other application, you probably know it would normally be Control C, but for terminal, it's actually special. And if you want to paste something into terminal you'll have to do control shift v instead of just control v all right now let's get back into our actual commands move into number three which is the yes command now this will keep constantly outputting whatever you type in after it forever until you hit control c to terminate it say i want my terminal to keep outputting a message like subscribe to drew out in tech It'll let me do that. Now it's going to keep constantly outputting subscribe to Drew Adam Tech until I hit control C. Or if you want to prank your friends who are running a Linux computer, you can make it say something like, 
catastrophic error with an exclamation mark and then hit enter and then we'll keep out putting that. Now a tech savvy person would see right through this, but if your friend's not tech savvy enough, then they might think that there's something wrong with their computer. Might be a fun one to do on your friend's computer, but then make sure they're to hit control C or even close out the terminal to tell them that there's actually nothing wrong with their computer and you might end up getting a good laugh out of it, depending on your friend's sense of humor. All right, number two on this list is the excise command. Now what this command does is it shows eyes on the left side of your screen that follow your mouse cursor around. Even if you minimize your terminal, it'll still be there and these eyes will just follow your mouse cursor around. It kind of looks creepy. So this might also be a good prank to creep your Linux user friends out. And it's also a good thing to just have fun with. And if you want to close it, you can also close it from here or hit control C, whichever you like. All right, number one on this list is called C matrix. Now what this will do is it'll basically generate a terminal background for you, which basically just shows random characters. So this might actually be a good command to have fun with to show off your geekiness. In fact, you may have seen me run this command during camera shots. Now it's not running well because I have screen recording running, but if I minimize this, it'll actually run buttery smooth. But if I expand this, it'll start getting a little bit unstable, but as long as I keep the size reasonable, it'll be fine. In fact, I usually run this from TTY mode to have the black background so you can make it true hacker man looking which you can get into by doing Control alt f2 you may have to press Control alt fn f2 if you're using a laptop and then logging into your account as if you were on a ubuntu server installation and you can of course get out of it by pressing Control alt f1 or f7 depending on your distribution you may have to press Control alt fn f1 if you're using a laptop now you can't show it in this video Video since it won't show up on the screen recording because I'm using my physical machine and not a virtual machine. And that was my top 10 list of Linux commands you should try. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it was helpful or just interesting, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.